large group. I'm so glad you're here. All right, I got my antivirus mask on and let's do a high five. Here we go. Morning kids, morning kids. All right, got my coffee. I've got our uh, antivirus right here. I'll set that there. And what is this? I like it. Hey, that gives me a great idea. Let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so you guys, ah, rubber bands, you like those? Let's see what we can do with this. That leads me into our story about what Jesus did against Satan. All right, so I'm not going to give it away yet. When we get to the end of the story, though, I'm going to explain what that rubber band represents. It's really cool. So uh, as we've been going through the stories, I want you to pay attention because one of the things we've got to do is keep the big picture question in our brains and use our smarticles, right? That's right. And now the question that we've got for this month is why did Jesus become human? Well, the answer is Jesus became human to obey his father's plan and to rescue sinners. Sinners like me and sinners like you. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to do the question and you'll do the answer right there in your house, and I want to hear you do it so loud that I can hear you over the internet. You ready for this? Here we go. So I'll do the question, you do the answer. One, two, three. Why did Jesus become human? Jesus became human to obey his Father's plan and rescue sinners. That was great! I love it! I think I could hear it. Today's Bible story and the stories that happen before and after have to do with Jesus getting ready for his ministry right here on earth. We heard about Jesus' baptism, and Jesus obeyed God by being baptized. Now, baptism reminds us of Jesus' death and his resurrection. It reminds us that when we trust in Jesus, we turn from sin. Remember this? Turn from sin. Go this way so you don't hurt yourself and go the other direction. Got to go opposite. So turn from sin, and then we start a new life, a life lived for Jesus, because it's worth it, trust me. Today's Bible story is called Jesus' Temptation. Let's find out what happened in this video. After Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Jesus did not eat for 40 days and 40 nights. He prayed and thought about God's plan for his life. When those days were over, Jesus was hungry. Then the devil, who tempts people to sin, came up to Jesus. He said, if you are really God's son, prove it. Tell these stones to become bread. If Jesus used his power to turn the stones into bread, he could eat them so he wouldn't be hungry anymore. But Jesus refused. Instead of using his own power, Jesus chose to trust God to meet his needs. Jesus said, God's word says that man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil tempted Jesus again. He took Jesus to the top of the temple in Jerusalem and said, If you are really God's son, prove it. Jump off this temple and trust God to protect you. The devil even said, God's word says that God will order his angels to keep you safe and they will protect you so that you will not even strike your foot against a stone. The devil had used words from scripture, but Jesus knew the devil's command was foolish. Jesus reminded him, God's word also says, do not test the Lord your God. Finally, the devil took Jesus to a high mountain. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and how great they were. The devil said to Jesus, I will give you all the riches and power of these kingdoms. 
They belong to me and I can give them to anyone I want. If you want them, all you have to do is fall down and worship me. Jesus resisted temptation again. He replied, Go away, Satan. God's word says, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil left Jesus, and angels came right away to serve Jesus. Throughout all these temptations, Jesus never sinned. Jesus was tempted, but he trusted God and never sinned. Jesus is perfect and righteous. A perfect sacrifice was required to take away sin. Jesus was that perfect sacrifice. He died on the cross to free us from sin and to give us the power to say no to temptation. Now that is a fantastic video and we can learn so much about that. So let's get into uh, kind of the finer points of this. Now, do you remember anyone else who was tempted by the devil? Anyone? That, yeah, Adam and Eve. Yeah, they were the first ones. They were in the garden, and that's where temptation started. And they did sin. They fell. Now, when sin entered the world, everything was affected. Now, we're all sinners, and we all need Jesus. Well, that is an understatement. We all need Jesus, for sure. So, do you know why the devil wanted to get Jesus to sin? Well, it's because the devil is against God and his perfect plan. If Jesus sinned, then he couldn't be the sinless Savior that people needed. No, not at all. But the devil could not stop God's plan. So Jesus was tempted, but he never sinned. So Jesus was tempted and never sinned. Now think about the things the devil tried to get Jesus to do. He wanted Jesus to use his own power to meet his own needs. Now, Jesus hadn't eaten for how long? 40 days and 40 nights. That's a long time. You think you could go that long without eating? <laughs> I can't even go barely a day. And I'm like, nom, 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 big mouth hungry. I like to eat for sure. So, but Jesus, 40 days and yes, he was hungry because Jesus is God in the flesh. But did Jesus sin? No. What did Jesus say? So Matthew 4.4, 4, got it in the Bible right here, it says, Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So he didn't need the bread. So the devil wanted Jesus to test God by jumping off the temple. Now, did Jesus sin there? Nope, not again. What did Jesus say for that? And that's in Matthew 4, 7. That says, Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Yeah, don't tempt God. Don't say, hey, I think I can do this and God will take care of me. That's not how it works. We need to be obedient to him first, and then that's where the blessings come. Finally, the devil offered Jesus kingdoms to rule over. If Jesus would just bow down and worship him, did Jesus sin there? Absolutely not. Nope. When What did Jesus say? That's in Matthew 4.10. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. I don't think Satan could get it through his head, could he? No, he tried and he tried and he tried. And uh, just like at the beginning, we had all these cups stacked up here. And they kind of represent temptation. And the way out of temptation is to quote scripture. And the rubber bands, those are like scriptures that we have memorized in our head. And just like when Satan tries to tempt us, if you have Bible verses memorized, 
It's like ammo or the rubber band to shoot down Satan's lies and knock down his false wall of cups. Yeah, Satan has no power. He's empty as a cup. That's right. You have more power with God on your side and with his verses in your mind, and you just quote those, and boom, that's how you get Satan to leave. So, Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Now, do you remember a time when God's people, the Israelites, were in that wilderness? Well, after God delivered his people from Egypt, they traveled into the wilderness and they rebelled against God. They worshipped idols and they complained, wah, wah, wah. <sighs> Now, God punished the people by making them wander for 40 years. 40 years is a long, long time. When Jesus was in the wilderness, he obeyed God perfectly. Now, Jesus was in a different wilderness. Jesus is perfect, and he is righteous. He is our perfect sacrifice, and it was required to pay for our sins so we could have forgiveness and life with God forever. Jesus was that perfect sacrifice. He died on that cross to free us from sin and to give us the power to say no to temptation. Now, some of you may be asking, well, is it a sin to be tempted? Well, in today's story with Jesus, he was tempted by Satan three times. So the temptation itself, well, that's not sin because even Jesus was tempted. Where sin begins is where it goes past the temptation and you act on it. You do something or want something that doesn't belong to you. And uh, yeah, you've got the power over that with God's word in your mind. All right, so now it's time for questions from kids. Okay, so our questions from kids card for this week is from Miss Kaylee. And let's see, her question is, did God make Satan? And if he did, why is Satan so bad? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you why this question lines right up with our story today. So after a bit of study, uh, finding out uh, about Satan, his original name was Lucifer, and he was created by God. So uh, Lucifer, Satan, he wasn't always existent, like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But God had created him, and he actually uh, anointed him to lead worship. But if we look in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 14, I'm just going to summarize this. It explains Lucifer's heart. And this is what he was saying to himself. He said, I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. I think that's a little prideful, don't you? And God will not allow pride. God will not allow anyone to be above him because he has always existed. He has created everything. And you know what? We exist and everything exists to exalt him and to bring glory to him, but not above him. And he also loves us so much that he wants us to worship him from our hearts and not to think that we're better or that we don't need him. So, and then, this is what is going to happen to Lucifer, and guess what? His name got changed to Satan. Um, there's some other names that he's called too, but we'll just stick with that. He said, yet you shall be cast into H-E double hockey stick, and that's in verse 15. So Satan thinks he's going to be above God, but God has all the power. Uh, Satan is not equal with God. Like, they're, uh, like Satan has this much power and God has this much power and they're pretty even and it's neck and neck. Uh, no, God is way up here and Satan is way down here. And God's going to go and smack down on him. That's right. And uh, God's going to take care of that in the long run. So another thing I was thinking 
uh, you know, the next time Satan tempts you or he accuses you of, hey, remember when you did this bad thing or did that bad thing? Yeah, God doesn't want you anymore. Uh, just remember, when Satan reminds you of, his, of your past, you remind Satan of his future. It ain't good, that's for sure. All right, well, as we wrap up our lesson today, we're still memorizing John 3.30, and that says, He must become greater, and I must become less. All right, well, I'll tell you what, I sure miss you guys, and uh, look for your prayer requests, praise the Lord reports, and if you have any new questions from kids, you can email me at ohkids at ormsbyheights.com, and we'll put that on the screen for you so you can get that written down. I'd love to hear from you. Let's go ahead and pray, and, and we'll talk to you soon. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you are God Almighty. And Jesus, by your power, you overcame the temptation of the devil. Jesus, you are greater. And the way that you defeated Satan is by using Scripture correctly. You told him what the real truth is. Satan tried to twist things around, and he is a deceiver. He is a tricker. But when we know God's Word, and we have it memorized in our minds, and we have it in our heart, Lord, we can use that against temptation, and that will give us a way to escape from sinning against a holy God. Lord, thank you for your Word that you give us so that we can live a holy life that's pleasing to you. Lord, we want to pray for uh, pray for our world, pray for our nation and our city, for those who are sick. We do pray for healing. Lord, we pray that we can come back to church and see each other again soon. And uh, We love you and we praise you and we want to give you all the glory because you are the King of Kings and we love you. Pray these things in Jesus' strong name. Amen. We'll see you all soon.